Yeah, a lot of fun. I haven't done this for a while. Um, so I'm Andy, uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about, about ADHD and software development. Um, yes, I do uh, have ADHD, and yes, I've been coping with it for a long, long time, but only realized in the past four years. Um, it came out, hang on, come on, come on, work. <sighs> Doesn't look like that. Oh, there it is. Press the right button this time. So how am I? I am Andy. I am 41. I'm almost the meaning of life. Um, if you get that reference, thank you. Former Microsoft MVP. Um, I didn't get it this year because I basically took last year off. Um, that was due to just uh, trying to find work because contracts ended, things like that happened. I've been a professional developer for just about 20-ish years since I left Newcastle University in 2020, uh, 2004. I nearly said 2024. That's this year. Um, but I've been a developer for 33 years. Um, yes, I was eight. My parents bought me a ZX Spectrum for Christmas, and my uncle turned up in his TVR. He was a programmer that worked for Oracle in Leeds. At the time, that was my career chosen for me. Nice shiny car, computers. All right then, sorted. I'm also a bouncer at weekends, just as a side project, but that is keeping me basically out of the house, socializing, meeting people like Katie Price. And I do get in the old fight. That was me in June uh, where I got the actual that beat it out of me. But nice one is, he's in jail, it's all good. Nice little story and a nice little photo for you. Hope you're not screamish. Sorry about that, I should have pre-warned. So, apparently, this is, take these with a pinch of salt, these are internet resource numbers. So, 5% ADHD in children 5 to 16. 30% ADHD and software development. We gravitate. Again, 80% of the stats are made up. Just take, take those with a pinch of salt. So what is ADHD? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Don't really like those words, but that's what the UK definition of it is. French. Trouble, deficit, attention, and hyperactivity. Or ta-da. <laughs> Another one I found out was dopamine attention variability executive dysfunction, or Dave. <laughs> you heard that one, a few people have. Uh, my discovery was literally 2020 to 2024. When we were in lockdown, I was with my family and it came out full force. Uh, it was just like, my now ex-wife uh, was uh, lucky enough to be a psychologist and so I did psychology at university, and she goes, have you looked into this? <laughs> I was like, nope, never. But when you sort of uh, make those changes and just sort of, it's hard to quantify those changes, I know, being honest about it and actually medication and diagnosis. No, I haven't had official diagnosis, the waiting list is ridiculous if you're going to go NHS. Um, but with everything that sort of comes out and you sort of go, oh, that's why I did that a few years ago. It makes more sense. <laughs> um, and it's just a little bit of those sorts of things that you progress through, you learn about yourself. And what I'm going to be talking about is not sort of diagnosing yourself or all the symptoms. It's just a few little things that you might notice in yourself or colleagues that you can help yourself or your, or your colleagues with. Hyperfixation, <laughs> big one. I had an idea, spent six hours developing the solution. I finished at 2 a.m. This was me three weeks ago. I went to the pub, had an idea, went home, ended up doing work. Then I got up at eight o'clock in the morning and went, yep, I did this last night. Work, work colleagues were like, you did what at 2 a.m.? I remembered actually to go to sleep, which was uh, 
it's just forgetting to eat, forgetting to drink, forgetting to take breaks and take sabbaticals and go to the loo or do anything like that. And from and you get frustrated with any kind of interruption when you're hyperfixating. You, if somebody walks in the room or phone rings, you're like, I can't get back to this now, and then you're done. That that is that is the. That's right. Do it. And if you get distracted, that is it. That's the end of your hyperfixation time. Uh, which can be very frustrating if you haven't finished what you were meant to be doing or trying to do. This is how you can help. Don't interrupt your colleagues while they're in that sort of mode. But if you are one of these, uh, if you are, do have ADHD, I listen to music at work constantly. If people see me with my headphones on, <laughs> nope. Write a message, I'll answer you back later. Um, walking, if you're in an office environment, Walking over to you is the worst thing you could do. If you, it's just like, but uh, just take it. I am a principal software engineer at the moment, which means I'm basically one of the team leaders. It's very difficult not to have interruption. Um, but I, I've got the, my colleagues sort of doing a lot more uh, around sort of working with that. And it's working and it's doing really well. Um, next one. Deem scenarios. Can we have a chat with, catch up later but from the manager? You get a message like that or an invite. Um, yeah. Or when you get a, an email that just says, oh, catch up. It's all, all I'm thinking is, what have I done wrong? What, what could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be anything else? It's probably nothing. It's probably just literally, oh, how are you doing? But just can you write a little bit more on that message <laughs> just to get, sort of help me along rather than just sitting there for two hours going, what do you want them to talk to me about in two hours? And the worst one is if HR sent one the night before for 10 a.m. the next day, you're not sleeping that night at all. Um, so just when you're, t when you're doing meetings, make sure that the person you're inviting knows what it's about. Uh, if, if you're one of those people, just get, yeah, what's this about, please? And hopefully they'll get used to it. It doesn't sort of, it doesn't think, count for things like one-to-ones or the structured stuff that you do in, in your day-to-day -day life. That's fine. It's just the, the quick, let's talk tomorrow. And you're like, nope, not going to work. Uh, and it's just some, one of those things to think about. Um, to sort of help other people and yourself so you can actually sleep at night. Um, and the good example is, oh yeah, a new meeting from the manager. This is a good example uh, because I was going on holiday this week. Hand over before holiday. Perfect. At least I know what it's about. <laughs> Information underload. So uh, this is an interesting one. You get a message off one of your colleagues, you've got five minutes to help with this. With what? <laughs> with, 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 I am, it's one of those times where you get, the re, you are a resource and you've got to spend your time going between all your colleagues, teaching them bits, uh, maybe uh, sort of going through code that they've written and stuff like that. But if you don't give me enough information, I'm just going to sort of almost ignore you. Uh, it's not purposely done. It's just, you sent me a message saying, have you got five minutes? No, I actually haven't. We're all busy. We all, we've all got work to do. Give me something more. Have you got five minutes to catch up on an Azure pipeline or, um, hang on, not to finish that. Yeah, okay. What spare time? Bigger messages are allowed. If you use Teams, emails, anything like that, you can write big messages. There is no camera, well, there is a character limit on Teams. I don't know what it is. I haven't quite hit it. I think it's 2000 or something ridiculous like that. You can write a little bit more in your messages. Um, include as much information as possible. Don't expect an immediate reply or gratification from your message to someone with ADHD. They will get back to you when they can. 
Um, if it's important, then maybe ping them again in a, in a five minute period. And if they still not reply, then go and tap them on the shoulder and stop them from hyperfixating, which is can annoy people, but it's one of those things. If it's important, like prods broke, yeah, interrupt them. We're all busy. It's just work. Everyone's, everyone's busy at work. Just actually, you, you'll learn in the end that it, things happen and uh, you do get frustrated. Um, and also, if you do have ADHD, don't forget to reply at some point. Because sometimes you might actually write the reply, not hit send. Do that multiple, multiple times a day. Number four, last minute. If you are expecting, well, if you know, you know. ADHD is a very good at doing everything last minute. This means packing for trips, development, this talk. I wrote this last night. In typical form, I went out for a few beers, got back to the hotel and wrote it last night, sat in front of watching the American football. Uh, as you can't tell, I might be a bit of a fan. And getting to places on time sometimes. If we plan to be somewhere on time, we will be there on time. And usually uh, I've started, built, uh, I've built into my day for years and years. I'll leave 10 minutes early, 20 minutes early and get there 10, 20 minutes early. I was stood outside here with Peter at 10 to five. Um, Cause we were, cause he said, oh, five o'clock we'll be there, I'll be there. Didn't realize he was already upstairs. So he's very good at getting here on time. <laughs> there you go, mate. Um, understand you might not, like if you've got a five day piece of work that you've given a software developer, you won't see anything for the first three days. Then in the last two days, you'll get the whole lot. And it's because they're asking questions, they're going through it in their mind, what's coming up, what's, what's this doing, what it's meant to be doing. And then all of a sudden it'll just get dumped into code and it'll, be work, it'll work, it'll be tested, it'll, and you'll be like, where did that come from? How did you get that progress to there? It's like, mm -hmm. and it does happen. It happens a lot. Um, and again, that could be the hyperfixation thing. It does lead back to hyperfixation because you get into a point where you go, right, now I've got all the information. I can do this. Don't be hard on yourself if you don't see progress, if you are an ADHD. -er. Um, I've, se I've, I've seen myself do it multiple times. It's like after three days, I'm like, I've got absolutely nowhere. And I go outside, take a break, regular breaks, thinking time. And even sometimes in the shower, you go, oh, that's how you do it. Get out the shower, go and do it. Um, it's hard to sort of quantify that one a lot more than anything else. Because people go, oh, you work a nine to five job. No, I don't. I might, I might be in work nine to five. And I might only think about work about half the day, but then the other half is outside of work while I'm cooking dinner. <laughs> um, Questions are prevalent. Um, so you will get so many more questions off somebody with ADHD than you don't otherwise. Because they will be asking all the different routes through the code, all the different scenarios, everything. And in the six months I've been in my current role, there's at least a couple that might be ADHD. They haven't, again, it's a sort of, it's a different scale as well. It's, it's a bit like other neurodiversity, uh, neurodiverse. Um, I, I don't like the word disability, but it's, it's being neurodiverse. You see it in other people when you uh, know a lot more about symptoms and things like that. So with those questions, you get those a lot of some people and you're like, okay, that's fine. Here's the answers to those. See you, see you tomorrow and, you, and they'll get work done as well just as quickly. Now this one is my one. I was trying to think of a, of a thing to actually call this, but the shoes on principle. Now, at the end of the day, I get home. I generally need to go out and do a bit of quick shopping because I haven't got any food in for the day. But if you take your shoes off, you're done for the day. 
uh, it works in software development and works in the work environment. Whereas you go, I've done this. There's no point in starting something else for the day. Yes, there is. Try and do it because it's the shoes on principle. If you stop doing work, you're not going to do any work for the rest of the day. Um, and it's, it's, it's just one of those things. It's, it's like you get home, you take your shoes off, right? Uh, right, take away them. Because you're not going to go to the shop to get that shopping. You're just going to sit on the sofa and watch, uh, binge watch uh, Agatha or something. I know it's new. I haven't actually started watching it yet. Uh, what can you do? If you ask your manager if there's anything required for a meeting, it, it, no, say it. Ask your manager if you are required for meetings. Um, just so you're not getting up and stopping the work you're currently doing. Because you, when you come back from that meeting, you won't necessarily want to keep on doing it. Uh, let colleagues uh, skip those meetings if they're not 100% required. Luckily, I did put 100, not 1,000 there. I misread that nearly. Allow for later lunches. As somebody who does like sitting down and doing a lot of code um, and like, get, likes getting the job done before he takes a break or before he goes for some thinking time, that's a big one. If you can, equi so if you can manage your self as well in terms of maybe going for a later lunch, maybe at two o'clock rather than, or, or half two rather than 12 and one, Yes, it's a pain and you have a really, really short afternoon, but hopefully get your boss to fill those with meetings and then you're not actually doing any work anyway. Um, I didn't really say that. Sorry, Pete. Um, that is my boss, by the way. Uh, and I hope this all helped because I put a call out uh, and I think it was Kissing who was one of the people that uh, mentioned it. I put a call out and said, I want to do a t talk on ADHD. And these are all my insights because I got zero messages. People should talk about it more and uh, in the workplace and inside and out and on LinkedIn and do stuff like that because I have a no BS filter on LinkedIn. I will talk and talk and talk about anything. And I, it is, it's one of those things I may be not be getting jobs because of it, but I actually do get jobs because of it as well. Uh, my current company love the fact that I have a no BS filter on LinkedIn uh, and I will post messages about all sorts of stuff. There is still stigma and we need to get away from that in any neurodiverse uh, type of environment uh, or development environment. And if you, any of you lot have anything you would like to contribute, just please come and talk to me or uh, grab my contact information there. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So, um, I I got no audio. No audio. No audio. Um so I, I can see the notification because you get so many notifications from everything during the day on, on uh, Windows. Maybe it's a good thing that Peter did that widget talk because I might actually use that uh, for, and build something for that. Um, but it's definitely something to sort of look at. Um, and as I said, because I've got the music on anyway, I'm not really listening for that sort of audio. Um, but I, I, I do sort of take that time to go, okay, I've done a good sort of section of code or a few tests. Let's check notifications just to make sure that I'm not missing anything important. Uh, but that's that's basically what I do. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
No. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, you can't be hyperfixating all the time. And I think what I do, it, so because I've taken, I've gone from being a, a leader on a team to then being a solo contractor for four years and now being, again, a leader on the team. And this time it's a completely different role. So it's n not anything managerial side of things. It's all architected document, uh, documentation, um, teaching the team in principles of like, uh, uh, principles of development, uh, pipelines, all that sort of stuff. I take that time out as my break time uh, because I know what I'm going to be writing that documentation on or writing the next tutorial for the team on and things like that. So I think it's not just develop, 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 develop which I love to do, I love developing, but, and I've been doing it for such a long time. But you're right, you do get burnt out and you can't just do it 24-7. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, I think one of the things along those lines is uh, I've just passed my six month probation in my company and they went, feels like you've been here for six years, but also feels like you've only been here for two weeks. And I was just like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> thank you. And uh, it was, it's, I think it's just in the way that I'm still sort of bringing in those ideas and bringing in that change. And I hope the, the, the good thing about this being recorded it is going to be shown at the company over the next couple of weeks, uh, the talk. So hopefully a few more of the colleagues will uh, sort of understand sort of where we're coming from. And maybe a, a few might even sort of realize that it's okay to be sort of different and okay to sort of change that. So uh, thank you very much for those questions. They're very good. Anything else? So what's the stuff you've done? Um, seen as though I've just started, so I've only been in full-time employment for the past six months after the full sort of discovery over the past four years. So I quit uh, full-time employment on January 2020. I uh, went full-time contracting and I worked for Twitch for four years, uh, doing contracts on and off over those four years. Um, and basically I just, ha I had very little interaction with people. So it, it, it was sort of this discovery in house with me and uh, my ex-partner that it was just like, and that whole interaction of ADHD that I haven't sort of gone into a workplace and done it before. So this is the first time that I'm very open about it. And uh, it's one of those things where I can see in my previous work experience where that ADHD had affected my work. So I'm taking that forward and bringing that learning from the past 20 years, so 16 years before doing, going into contracting, is 16 years worth of development that I didn't realize I had ADHD or you don't, so you have those little inklings of, you're slightly different than most people. <laughs> um, but then also you, you're sort of, as soon as you know, you find out and you go, that's why that happened, that's why that happened, that's why that happened when I was 20 type thing. And you go, right, okay. So you get to learn to cope with it. So one of the things I, I didn't mention was diagnose, uh, medication and diagnosis. Technically, I don't want a diagnosis because I know but uh, you, you can so you did, did the test and the, the initial test and the doctor went right okay yes you can go on the pile for diagnosis because yes that's that's very ADHD like symptoms I'm like I don't need the medication I've learned to cope with it over the past few years and it's one of those things that is part of me now so if I was taking medication that would change the that could change the way I think and could change the way I do things which I don't really want 
because I'm happy in myself, I'm happy with what I, I'm like, and it's not screw other people, it's educating them in what, how the way I work and me learning how they work and taking that both ways. So uh, I've been doing sort of a lot of one-on-ones with my colleagues um, in different parts of their learning. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where you learn a lot from uh, doing that sort of thing. But uh, I think there's actually one more slide. Oh, no, that's the previous one. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you very much for being here. That was great. And I will be, we'll be doing that talk again. Thank you.